Hi, so today we're going to take a look at the Evolution Power File. So let's have a look, see what we've got. Yeah, there's been times when I've thought one might be handy for certain things that I do. So I thought I'd invest in one. So I've got a bag, dust bag. The instructions. Got the machine itself. Oh, it's already together there. I thought I'd have to put do some assembly. It's quite a little dinky thing. See, I've got another end there. Oh, that might change the shape of the tip of it by the looks of it. But we'll find out. Got some spare carbon brushes in here. And then we've got some belts here. Right, get you in closer so uh, we can have a look at it. It's quite a small uh, machine or tool. And it's pretty light so, you know, you're not going to get tired holding it. But let's have a look what we've got. So here, we have a locking lever. which is pretty cool because what that's for is you can pull that back oh no you don't you push it forward you pull it back when you want to lock it push it forward and you can turn this to these different degrees goes up to 120 degrees of turn which is pretty cool so it means if you're working on something where you can't get in forward and you're going just downwards, you can put it that way on. So you just turn that to where you want it, pull that back and it locks it off. So that's pretty cool. We've got a lever here. That's the belt release, that's to release the tension on the belt. So you can take the belts off and change them. Just like on a normal belt sander. And then just push it back to put the tension back on again. And on here, this is the knob. This knob there is the one that you use for tracking. So if it's going off to one side when you just give it a little bit of a start up and see if it's going off centre, if it's going right or left and just give it a little turn on there one way or another. If you go turn it one way and it's getting worse, just start turning it the other, but only a little bit at a time and that will do your tracking. So switches like on most power tools, just a normal switch there. And then it's got the lock in so you can lock it on. Just hold it in, push the button and release the bottom. And then when you want to take it off again, just press the button. It's also got your speed control there. got a nice soft grip on down here there is uh, an attachment uh, like the attachment there for either your bag for a dust bag to go on or for a uh, hose 
but it's quite a small diameter so you'd have to get some fittings then to make it fit but obviously if I was filing metal because this will file metal uh, wood acrylic you know all sorts of stuff but obviously if you're filing metal you don't want to have your dust bag on if you use this for wood wood dust because it'll probably catch fire and uh, you don't want that going to your shop vac if your shop vac is used for like du uh, wood dust so like i said it comes with two heads so it's got this one with a single wheel and then this double wheel so it'll just change the position of the end of the uh, belt there so let's see how you change it so you take the tension off the belt take the belt off and then the screw there that's used for the tracking just unscrew that on here these will only go one way so just look at the one you're taking off and uh, that goes the same it's got a lug on this side because there's a spring inside here inside there there's a spring in between and that goes on the little bit of a lug that sticks out there lot there So we undo this, hold on to this because that spring might want to shoot off. So just slowly keep undoing this till it releases. There you go. So that just simply comes out. All it is is that screw going into a screw hole on here, on there. So there's only one screw hole, so you can't get it wrong, but you just got to keep an eye on that spring, that's all, that sits inside there. So that sits in there. And like I say, we've all got little uh, lugs on there that stick out and that's what uh, goes in the middle of the spring on that side to hold it in place so all you got to do now is hold that in there so it's properly in the spring and then carefully start your threads make sure you don't cross them just uh, go steady and make sure because at the minute this spring is holding it trying to hold it at an angle so just carefully start your screw it uh, your threads off. So this might be a little bit awkward for a start. But you don't want to cross thread them. So just make sure. There we go. So look, that was easier if I held that, try and held it straight so it was straight out. And then just carefully screw just before you do it right up just make sure that it's all located right the spring so do that up what I do is uh, just do it up and just take some of the tension off it just undo it a bit so you've got a bit of movement left and right Right, so now let's put the belt on again. So the belt, uh, you've got to look for the arrow and the arrow will go round that way. And it's got a uh, arrow on there so you know which way it goes. So just make sure the arrow's facing that way. So, like I say, this is now the double-headed one, uh, the double roller one. So now we can put the tension back on there by pushing that lever back across. Right now, 
we can plug it in and we'd need to do the track in so it doesn't matter whether you're putting this one on or this it's still the same uh, the same way as that I've done that so always unplug it when you're doing this when you're changing stuff over right I'll turn the speed down as well so I can see it and then just carefully just do it a little bit at a time that looks pretty good actually so what you're doing is making sure that it's staying nice and central if not like I said if you watch it You'll see it move over to one side. That's gone a bit over to that side. So then I'll pull it back over this way. Just do a little bit of a turn at a time. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, that... So it's got that head there, which will put an angle on things. So if you're filing, you know, you want a bit of a flat, you're trying to get in somewhere, but you're having to put it through that way and still trying to get a bit of a flat on, you've got that that you can use there to go in in your gap and still do a flat so that's probably why you'd use this sort of head I mean you'd find out at the time but uh, yeah that's pretty good and then obviously you can once you've got your tracking done you can speed it up uh, remember you've always got your spare carbon brushes as well that after a load of time and uh, your carbon brushes wear down you've just got the openings there that you unscrew both sides and then put your new carbon brushes in I think what we'll do I'll swap it back for this head because I think I'll use this head more often than this one and then we'll give it a try on some things Right, sorry about the noise of the rain on the workshop, if you can hear it. This is a welcome bit of rain because uh, it has been dry lately. So the plants will, uh, plants will be liking this. And it makes a bit more refreshing outside as well. So that was really quick to change that over. So because I'd done that once with that, it, the more you do it, it's uh, really quicker to do. So straight away I've managed to get the threads on there and get it on there. So that's pretty good. Right, what well, we're going to try this. Let's try some wood first. By the way, the belts are still the same size no matter which head you use. So the belts are all the same. Um, one of the reasons why I've got this in the first place that I thought it would be handy when I'm making my uh, push sticks. So I'll make these push sticks to put, uh, put in my store. Uh, by the way, the store's on hold at the minute because I want that happy with the shop that I was using. So the shop name will still be the same. Uh, it'll still be in the workshop.shop. But I'm changing where the location of the shop is. So that's on hold at the minute. If you look to try and look in the store, it's not there. But I bought these because I could use them. If these, when I cut these, these are laminated together. And if there's a slight little ridge inside there, I, can, uh, I thought if I got one of these, I could go in and get to it easy to... Uh, file that out before I do the coating of edging that I put on 
because I coat them in stain afterwards because I like the contrast. So there, this is all sanded up to the uh, to be correct, and then uh, I go round by hand with stain stain in the edge because I like it. So I like yeah the contrast of the sides and the edges and the handles at uh, the grips. But that's why I thought about getting one of these in the first place. But obviously they can be used for loads of things. And I do a bit of welding now and again. So you can use these on metal. So if you want to clean up a weld or just get to something, clean up, ready for a weld, you could use one of these. Right, let's try it on this bit of wood. Because with wood, as well as doing bits like that, I thought that maybe if you did any carving, uh, carved out a bit of a bowl, dip in a bowl or a seat or something, that you could probably tidy up. So if you've been chiseling or grinding out a bowl, uh, a bowl shape, you could probably get in with a file to tidy it up before you do your final sanding right let's have a look at this so this is on what wood is this this is i can't remember it's a hard wood but i can't remember which one it's either it's either ash or lime i'm sure it's one of them too put the bag on so the bag simply fits on there like I say you could probably sort out an adapter because this is the size of my shop vac and so it need just a bit of an adapter on there to get the get it the right size The dust is going everywhere else but probably but not in the bag but this is fetching this out at an unbelievable rate let me show you So yeah, this is taking it out really quick, but if you look at that, that's really good. That'd be handy for if you're making things or fitting some hinges somewhere. If there's something catching and you just need to take a little bit out, that'd be quite good for things like that as well. But yeah, it's making easy work of that. That's great. So this is a bit of oak. Same again, it's making really easy work of that. So the dust bag on there is completely useless, look. Not surprised, but uh, it would be surprising if anything went into here at all, actually, because it seems to be all over here. So you definitely could do with, if you're doing a lot with it, you could do with fitting up uh, your dust extraction to there.
here's a big lump of metal that we can try it on. So this was outside, so that's why it's wet in that rain. But a big lump of metal. Keep hold of these when I change them off the car, these brake discs, because uh, I can use them to hold things for welding. So there's all manky weld on there. So over on this side I have got metal on the floor, metal sheet, so it's to try and stop any sparks or anything from uh, burning the workshop down. So on here, like if we are welding, but the main point is because usually you would use a grinder cause you, uh, to get to that because you can get to it okay. But if you welded inside something in a space, say you were welding inside here somewhere, you could get this through to tidy it up. Or like I said, any, any tight bits, if you wanted to uh, clean something up so you can weld it. So like, say we're going to do a weld on there, we can clean it up with this. One thing I forgot, look, which you shouldn't forget, is take that off so you don't set fire to dust that it's not collected. So if we were doing a weld on there, or welding a couple of parts, we can clean it up like that. But let's try just grinding some weld down. All this is just starting the welder, uh, trying the welder and setting it up. Uh, uh, most of the, well, all the time actually. But let's just get rid of some of this. But like I said, if you're trying to get in somewhere and you're trying to clean up a weld, I got carried away and completely sanded that off, but you get the idea. So yeah, there's, it's so simple to uh, put together and use, there's not a lot more can say about, uh, you know, about the use of it, because the use you would find out as you're going along. I know that if I've got this on hand, I'm going to use this no end but it'll be all for little bits and bobs. It's not necessarily for a certain use. You just think, oh, I got that, I'm gonna use that. So yeah, I think this will be really handy as long as I remember. So I'll have to put it somewhere I can see it to remember that I've got it to uh, use it. Right, let's have a look at the specs on it then to give you some ideas on them. So it's got a 400 watt motor. The belt size is 13 millimeters. So half inch by a length of 457 or 18 inches in Imperial. And the weight is just 1.75 kilograms. It's really light. And that's about it. And obviously 240 volt one here in the UK. But yeah, I'm really happy with it and how easy it is. For a start, I thought uh, doing this review, I was gonna to have to take it out of the box and assemble this. But the head was already on. And like we've seen, it's really easy to change the head. So it's really quick to swap over if you want to change to the uh, double roller head. And it'll be super quick just to change your belts as well. Just quickly flip that back, 
change to another grit or to you know whatever and then just put the other one make sure it's the right way put it back on and you're ready to go just a quick track on there and you're away but yeah I'm really impressed with it the only thing I'm not impressed with is the dust bag is just uh, I'm not surprised really I can't be surprised this is all out here in the middle of nowhere so there's not a lot of chance for it to catch you know to catch the dust unless you put your uh, extractor on there so you got a good bit of suction around near this end or you could even just like I do sometimes I just get my dust extractor whatever I'm working on I just uh, switch it on put the rest this near where it where I'm working just get someone to hold it there and then just work away here and let this just get the dust that's it gets you know most of it that's being chucked up in the air but yeah so that's it simple as that it's not a bad price keep it on hand quick to change nice and light as in uh, use uh, ev uh, evolution or evolution whichever way you want to say it i have my chop saw and uh, that's really reliable and i assume this is going to be reliable too so i hope this video was of some use to you if you've ever wondered what they can do or you know whether you need one or thought about getting one but like I say you won't know until you get to a job and think god if only I had one of them so anyway thanks for watching if you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing if you click down in which way would it be I can't remember down one of these sides there's a subscribe button if you want to subscribe and follow along if you click that we do a bit of all sorts here so i've been david and thanks for watching take care if you like the video give it a thumbs up i'll see you next time in the workshop